All right, good morning, everyone. And uh, let me welcome uh, everyone to the kickoff and launch of the Living Therapeutics Initiative. Um, throughout my uh, chancellorship, I've often re referenced uh, time and place, a belief that uh, we are collectively living through one of the most exciting uh, times for science um, in many generations. The convergence of fundamental basic discovery at the cellular level and uh, our knowledge about individual molecules combined with the ability to manage huge data sets uh, with the advances in computer science and statistical analysis such as artificial intelligence, etc., has really launched uh, a revolutionary time which I think will be with us uh, for the next uh, couple of decades. And then place. UCSF is centered squarely in one of the most exciting, uh, innovative ecosystems in the world. If you draw a circle with a radius of about 40 miles uh, from our campuses, uh, you, you encounter some of the most exciting, uh, both nonprofit and for-profit enterprises working in the field of biomedical science uh, and computer science uh, in the world. And we can take advantage of that at UCSF. And I believe that the Living Therapeutics Initiative um, is a, a brand new paradigm that epitomizes our ability to leverage time and place. Uh, it will leverage our existing strengths across uh, our scientific and clinical ex expertise to advance research and advancing promising therapies. Why am I calling it the Living Therapeutics Initiative? You know, if we go back a couple of centuries, uh, drugs were largely natural products, uh, barks, plants, uh, that people uh, had learned from just practical experience contained active ingredients. Then moving into the 19th century was the golden era of chemistry where people started to isolate the individual active components of, of those natural products. Um, you know, aspirin being a great paradigm for that, digoxin, and many, many other drugs. And then uh, the chemists uh, really exploring the vast repertoire of chemistry uh, to provide us with drugs. But for the most part, those drugs were not particularly specific and had broad effects, both target effects and off-target effects. And then in the, in the 20th century, uh, beginning in the 1960s, uh, UCSF played a major role in targeted biologics. Uh, the advances in recombinant DNA technology, et cetera, allowed um, scientists, including those at UCSF, to uh, become much more targeted in the therapies. But still, these were not particularly clever drugs. You gave them, they did their thing, and, they, and then they were removed by the body. I believe, as do many others, that we are entering yet another generational shift in our approach to therapeutics. And that is using our own cells and the amazing ability to reprogram those cells to do things that they weren't normally uh, uh, prepared to do, um, to seek out uh, diseased tissue, whether it's cancer or inflamed, uh, the aggravated immune response to diseases such as autoimmune disease and many others, uh, as well as correct genetic uh, mistakes that have been made in monogenetic diseases. So this is, I think, uh, the, the very uh, dawn of the next generation in therapeutics. And here at UCSF, we have decided to call this the Living Therapeutics Initiative. Now, this is not brand new. We've been working at this for approximately 15 years with people like Wendell Lim and his colleagues uh, over a decade ago, beginning uh, the understanding that cells, in fact, could be reprogrammed like you reprogram a computer, uh, understanding the engineering principles of networks within cells, uh, and then our clinicians beginning to think about which diseases might be amenable to cellular therapy. Uh, over time, we were missing a critical component, and that was the ability for us to actually manufacture these cellular therapies right here at UCSF, close to patients, close to the basic scientists, uh, and to be able to take it from the full continuum fundamental discovery all the way through to first in human trials. And the announcement that we made a couple of weeks ago 
in our alliance, our strategic alliance with Thermo Fisher Scientific, a multinational firm who uh, are really leading uh, the world in the innovative equipment that's needed to produce cells at scale and at quality uh, for human use. Uh, we will be uh, co-developing a facility right on the Mission Bay campus on UCSF land. Uh, the address is 777 Mariposa Street, immediately across the street from the Children's Hospital. And this facility will be open in about a year. Uh, the excitement around this initiative has caught the uh, excitement of our donor community and they've been extraordinarily generous and have allowed us to develop a fund that can be used to support innovative uh, programs uh, in cell therapy, both at the early development phase, as well as the clinical uh, early human trial phase. And I've asked uh, Dr. Alan Ashworth, uh, the president of the Helen Diller Family Comprehensive Cancer Center here at UCSF to lead a steering committee of our faculty uh, to guide uh, this uh, exciting initiative. So I'm now going to turn it over to Alan to say a few words, and then we'll hear from uh, some of our scientists who are working in this uh, field. So thank you for joining us this morning. I truly believe this is the beginning of an incredibly exciting initiative here at UCSF that will fundamentally change how we think about disease going forward. Over to you, Alan. Thanks, Sam. First, I, I want to thank the Chancellor for his uh, deep and continuing involvement in bringing this project to, to the stage that it's at. It's taken more than two years to, um, to get to this stage and involved a large number of people who worked very hard um, and um, in this really quite complex project to, to develop the partnership with Thermo Fisher and to round out the overall initiative. I also want to say how thrilled I am personally to be involved in this, this really exciting and important new initiative. So we believe that cell therapy has really vast and untapped roles in treating a wide range of diseases. And as Sam mentioned, in some respects, there's been a lot of work already uh, underway at UCSF with multiple excellent and innovative programs across disease areas and technologies but it hasn't been coordinated. And in particular, we've liked the vital component to, to manufacture at scale in modern facilities, um, the cellular products and take them in at scale into the clinic. So that's the role of the steering committee. Um, we, we, also, we want to drive that uh, transition to the clinic to benefit patients. We're also going to provide targeted funding for bold new initiatives uh, and also identify and remove roadblocks to moving the, these fundamental discoveries from the lab to the clinic. Um, and really, um, the, the overall aim is patient benefit. So yes, we're going to do fundamental discovery, but it will be an, with an eye to moving that into the clinic and helping patients um, in diverse disease areas. Um, and there's the funding that we're gonna to provide um, to PIs working in this area will be both proof of uh, concept, excuse me, I've lost my piece of paper. Because that slide went up. Uh, proof of concept um, and, and to progress things into clinical trials. And at the end of this session, if you stay on after the presentations, I will give um, further details of the funding opportunities. Um, and Sam mentioned the centerpiece of the Living Therapeutics Initiative is the manufacture facility in Mission Bay at 777 Mariposa Street. Some of you know that as the uh, building formerly known as the Calstein um, uh, Plumbing Spares uh, Warehouse. Um, and I want to particularly to thank Barry Selick, uh, Vice Chancellor for Business Development, who uh, worked with his team extremely hard in bringing the uh, negotiations with Thermo uh, Fisher to a successful conclusion so that we can partner on delivering these, uh, these new therapies. 
Now, um, we mentioned the steering committee, and if you can put the slide up with the faces of the people in, involved. Um, we wanted, want to ensure transparency in both the funding that we're given um, uh, and in how we operate. So we've gathered together a, a, a committee of, of these individuals who will work with me to uh, make sure the LTI reaches its fullest potential. So we have Michelle Hermiston, who is clinical director of the Pediatric Immunotherapy Program, Wendell Lim, who's chair of the Department of Cell and Molecular Pharmacology and director of the Cell Design Institute, Tippi McKenzie, co-director of the UCSF Center for Maternal Fetal Precision Medicine and a pediatric fetal surgeon. Alex Marson, director of the Gladstone UCSF Institute of Genomic Immunology. Chizi Tang, immunologist and director of the Department of Surgery's Transplantation Research Lab. And Jeff Wolf, who's director of the Cancer Center's Myeloma Program. We'll also be involving a large number of other individuals bringing in their specialized expertise in areas such as specific disease areas, process development, and regulatory affairs, all of which are critical components of bringing these new uh, therapies to, to patients. And I want to introduce some of the, uh, the, the presentations that will give some examples of the great work that is going on at UCSF in this area. First, Wendell Lim will give an overview about the capabilities of UCSF and our partners to advance living cell therapy. Chi Zi Tang will then discuss her work in regulatory uh, T cell therapy to suppress inflammation. And finally, Alex Marson will dis discuss his work regarding the genetic programs that control uh, immune cell function and how to translate these discoveries into improved immunotherapies for cancer, autoimmune diseases, and infectious disease. And as I mentioned, I will um, round it out after the presentations uh, with a description of the uh, request for uh, funding proposals that will go out um, uh, immediately following this presentation. So please enjoy the um, scientific presentations. Hi, I'm Wendell Lim. I'm professor and chair of the Department of Cellular and Molecular Pharmacology at UCSF. Right now is an amazing time in medicine. There's a transformation going on in therapeutics, and that is the development of living therapies. Living therapies are actual living cells that have been engineered to be able to enter the body, to seek out and find disease, and once they enter into the disease tissue, to be able to execute complex therapeutic functions that go beyond what we can do with traditional molecular therapies. This is tremendously exciting because it's a, the opportunity to apply much of the exciting discovery and mechanistic research that we do here at UCSF, trying to understand the basis of disease, trying to understand how cells work and how they can be engineered, and now apply it to try to treat the most difficult diseases we have, things like cancer, autoimmunity, degeneration. What's challenging, though, is not only do we need to develop these therapies, but we need to be able to overcome new challenges, like how do we manufacture living cells in a safe and productive way? How do we actually navigate the complex regulatory requirements for this new type of therapy? And then how do we execute complex clinical trials that allow us to test these therapies and uh, see if they're effective and also to improve them. What's wonderful about the Living Therapeutics Initiative is this is an umbrella that really links together the many parts of our community that are required to execute this and to bring to fruition these complex new therapies, especially the new manufacturing capacity, our investment in trying to uh, push tri uh, new um, therapies towards trials. These are all things that are really going to be revolutionary and help us bring this revolution to fruition. I am Qi Zhi Tang. I'm a translational immunologist, professor in the UCSF Diabetes Center, Department of Surgery, and member of the UCSF ImmunoX. It is a great honor for me to serve on the steering committee of the UCSF Living Therapeutic Initiative. My main research focus is in developing regulatory T-cell therapy to suppress unwanted inflammation. 
in the next few slides, I'll summarize our work in the past 20 years since I arrived at UCSF as a postdoctoral fellow. In the past five years, we have realized the power of the immune cell therapy in curing previously incurable cancers. During the pandemic, we also witnessed the ravage of an uncontrolled immune system unleashed by SARS-CoV-2. In fact, many diseases are caused by an over-exuberant immune system and chronic inflammation unable to resolve. A healthy immune system can fight infections and cancers and also have built-in regulators and controllers to prevent excessive immune activation and tissue damage. Among the myriads of immune controllers, regulatory T cells or T-Rex as we call them are indispensable to a healthy immune system. T-Rex are a small subset of CD4 positive T cells dedicated to suppress accidental immune activation and promoting resolution of inflammation. In the absence of T-Rex, as seen, as seen in IPEX patients, will carry genetic mutation that prevent the development of T-Rex. Fatal systemic autoimmune diseases erupt in infancy. Subtle defects in T-Rex often underlying the root cause of many autoimmune and inflammatory diseases. In early 2000, we found that T-Rex can be isolated and expanded in vitro. A single infusion of expanded T-Rex prevented autoimmune disease, such as autoimmune diabetes. Similarly, it was later shown that T-Rex therapy could delay lupus nephropathy, reduce severity of CNS inflammation in a mouse model of multiple sclerosis, prevented experimental inflammatory bowel diseases, prevented transplant rejection, and even reduced neurological damage by ischemic stroke. Inspired by this large body of robust preclinical data from many laboratories, we began to translate T-REG therapy to humans by developing GMP-compatible human T-REG manufacturing processes. We launched the first clinical trial in 2011. In the past 10 years, under the leadership of Jeff Bluestone, Jonathan Essenston and myself, we have conducted more than 10 early phase T-REG therapy trials in type one diabetes, cutaneous lupus, pemphigus, kidney, liver, and islet transplantations. Our program is the largest T-REG therapy program in the world. We have shown that autologous T-REG cell therapy is feasible and safe. Our current clinical efforts are focused on addressing the efficacy of T-REG cell therapy. While the clinical trials are running, my lab has been developing next generation T-REG cell therapy. We're engineering T-REG specificity using CARs and TCRs to direct them to target organs. We're building autocrine orthogonal growth factors and survival factors and receptors so the cells can persist independent of the changes in the environment. We're developing approaches to lock in T-REG epigenome so these long-lived cells will maintain their lineage identity and immune regulatory functions after infusion. Through these efforts, we aim to enhance the efficacy and safety of T-REG cell therapy in future clinical translations. Hi, I'm Alex Marson, and it's a pleasure to be here today to celebrate a milestone in the history of cell therapies. I want to thank the Living Therapeutics Initiative, the UCSF leadership, and the partnership with Thermo Fisher, which now have laid the plans for a major new cell therapy manufacturing here at UCSF. And with that, we can start to imagine the horizons of how cell therapies can be designed to treat a wide range of diseases in patients here at UCSF and around the world. And in that spirit, I wanna tell you about the work that we're doing in my lab and at the Gladstone UCSF Institute of Genomic Immunology, where we are trying to harness the power of genomics 
and genome engineering to really understand genetic control of cells in the immune system well enough that we can start using the power of CRISPR and gene engineering to program specific cells in the immune system to have functions that transform them into cell therapies to treat a wide range of human diseases from cancer to autoimmunity to infectious diseases and beyond. Genetically engineered cell therapies are already in the clinic. We now have FDA approved chimeric antigen receptors uh, that are delivered into human T cells that are taken out of circulation. The chimeric antigen receptors or CARs are introduced into the T cells with viral vectors currently that insert these genes into haphazard places in the genome. But even that is sufficient to introduce these artificial receptors that will direct the T cells to find and eliminate cancer cells when the CAR T cells are infused into patients. And we have seen really remarkable success for certain types of cancer focused on blood cancers. We now have a number of CAR T cells that are FDA approved, but there's still an enormous number of patients where we need to have improved options for more powerful, more accessible cell therapies. And we are optimistic that that will be possible thanks to really the revolutionary power of gene engineering, especially CRISPR DNA editing technologies. And now what we have been working on is an easy, flexible system that allows us to take cells out of, out of a blood sample and pick a very specific sequence in, in the DNA of individual immune cells and start making targeted precise modifications to remove genes that are limiting the function of those immune cells, fix individual patient mutations, and even take a targeted part of the genome and replace it with a whole new sequence to reprogram the cell function that we care about to make a more powerful cell therapy. I'm just gonna give you a little few snapshots of where we're taking this forward and where we'll see new opportunities thanks to the expanded infrastructure for cell therapy manufacturing here at UCSF. We've been working very actively to help family uh, that, that was brought to our attention by our colleagues. This is a family where there are multiple children that have different manifestations of autoimmunity. And that has been tracked down by genome sequencing, or exome sequencing, to actually find the causal mutations that occur in a critical gene in the immune system called IL-2RA. What I'm showing you here is that healthy human T cells will turn on high levels of this IL-2RA, but when we actually got blood samples mailed to us from the children affected in this family, we could see that almost no IL-2RA was found on the surface of their T cells. But with CRISPR, we could actually go in and fix at the site in the genome one of the mutations that was causing this problem. And we can actually restore meaningful levels of IL-2RA to the surface of these T cells. Now, IL-2RA has a number of roles in the immune system, but one of the places where it's absolutely critical is in regulatory T cells or Tregs. These are T cells that dampen down the an excessive inflammation and regulatory T cells play critical roles in preventing autoimmune disease. Now UCSF for years has been a world leader in regulatory T cell therapies, thanks to the work of Jeff Bluestone, uh, who really spearheaded this, and this has been carried forward by Jonathan Essenstein, who's the head of the UCSF Cell Therapy Manufacturing Group, and Kizi Tang, a uh, professor in surgery and in the Diabetes Center, and in a close partnership with a clinician at Yale, Kevin Harold, where for years, patients' regulatory T cells have been taken out of their blood, expanded in the lab, and reinfused to try to work towards new treatments for autoimmune disease and organ transplantation. Now we have a new opportunity to actually go in and actually start correcting patient mutations, perhaps including this IL-2RA mutation that are disrupting regulatory T cell function. And this is work that is being led by Brian Shai, the first cell therapy fellow in the lab medicine department here at UCSF in a very close partnership with Jennifer Doudna and, and Theodore Ernoff and others at the Innovative Genomics Institute which is a partnership between Berkeley and UCSF to advance CRISPR applications to benefit society. So we hope that we now will have expanded infrastructure and resources to accelerate the path 
for gene correction in patient mutations where regulatory T cells are not working properly. And we can get to the root cause of fixing the imbalance in the immune system to treat autoimmune diseases. That is, that's an example where there's an individual mutation that's causing disruption in a particular immune cell type um, or in a, in, in a limited number of cell types. But for many common diseases, we want to take advantage of the power of gene engineering to make really reprogram the function of cells. And one of the functions that we care about for cells is can we program what they'll recognize? I already mentioned that this can be done with a chimeric antigen receptor or CAR. It can also be done by rewriting the T cell's own T cell receptor, which is what naturally determines its specificity. We have shown that we can now do both of these with CRISPR, totally circumventing the need for viral vectors and having real precision about where these sequences go into the genome. I just wanted to say that this is now through collaborations around UCSF and with other institutions, we're now advancing a number of therapeutic applications of antigen programmed T cells that will have expanded opportunities to help patients thanks to the Living Therapeutics Initiative. We are working with a multiple myeloma group here at UCSF to design a non-viral CRISPR engineered CAR T cell that recognizes targets in multiple myeloma cells. You can see that we, we now have a manufacturing process that is uh, starting to, uh, with very high efficiency, make these targeted CAR T cells that recognize a myeloma target. We're working with Michael Wilson, a neurologist at UCSF, with my colleague, Theodore Ernov at the Innovative Genomics Institute, and with Phil Greenberg, who's one of the pioneers of cell therapy at the Hutch, to make T cells that can potentially treat a horrible neuroinfectious disease caused by the JC virus. And here we're making T cell receptors, T cells that can recognize a part of the JC virus. And we're working with Hideo Kata and PICI, the Parker Institute for Cancer Immunotherapy and CIRM to make T cell receptor T cells that can recognize targets on certain types of pediatric brain cancer. So we're bringing many, many approaches to program T cells to recognize different diseases. And we hope that we will now have more shots to start manufacturing these and getting them into patients where, that, where they may cause a real benefit. We know that that's not the whole, that, that we need more. We need that even if we can make antigen specific T cells, if we really wanna treat some of the tumors that have been resistant to CAR T cell therapies, we need to find new ways to genetically enhance them to make them resistant to some of the challenges that they'll face. And so for solid tumors like breast cancer and colon cancer and, and pancreatic cancer, we wanna find new ways to engineer T cells to make them more powerful so that once they get inside a tumor, they can overcome some of the challenges where they'll find checkpoints and suppressive cells and suppressive soluble factors that will all try to dampen their function. And here too, CRISPR is incredibly powerful, not just as a manufacturing tool, but as a discovery tool. And we have been investing a lot in recent years in developing platforms that now allow us to use CRISPR as a way to decode all of the genetic modifications that might be beneficial in making more powerful cell therapies. We can take, for example, a collection of T cells and in each T cell, get rid of one gene at a time and then race that whole population of cells against each other to see which gene disruption actually makes the T cells perform better in some way that we care about. Or now we can actually not do that with gene deletion. We can pick a particular site of the genome and add many new sequences, including synthetic biology sequences at a defined site in the, in the genome and race those against each other. So we're quickly learning which genes can be deleted or added from T cells to boost their function and make them into more powerful cellular therapies. This is a schematic of how we can actually pick a site in the genome, add many sequences into it, and then see even in vitro or in vivo, which ones will transform the, those T cells into more powerful cellular therapies. We can actually watch and learn which sequence allows T cells to continue to divide and accumulate once they find their target in a tumor. So this is really an engine to accelerate the discovery and continue to find new genetic modifications that will make T cells more powerful immunotherapies.
One of the, the, the targets that's come out of our gene disruption screens through a wonderful collaboration over many years with Alan Ashworth, the head of the Cancer Center, who's played a pivotal role in the Living Therapeutics Initiative. This is work that was done by Julia Carnavale, a postdoc and an oncologist in his lab, working very closely with Eric Schiffrud, a postdoc in my lab. They have done a number of screens and have now in unpublished data have exciting data that one of the things that we've learned from these genetic studies with CRISPR is a new target that can be deleted in T cells or disrupted in T cells to enhance CAR T cells. And I'm showing you a, a small a snapshot of this unpublished data that I think really conveys the message. You can see here, this uh, imaging shows this, this, what's lighting up here are, is, is our cancer cells that have been put, these are human cancer cells in an immune deficient mouse. And when you infuse human T cells, these are CAR T cells that are good CAR T cells. At this dose, they're still insufficient to, at this, to clear the cancer from the mice. But as soon as we knock out the gene for RASA2, we see a marked difference in, in this subset of the data where we really see a remarkable clearance of the tumors that translates to an extension of survival in these mice. And so we think that this is gonna be a modular gene disruption to enhance CAR T cells and engineered T cells for a number of different diseases. And we look forward to working with the Living Therapeutics Initiative with the UCSF Cell Therapy Manufacturing Facility um, and with Thermo Fisher Partners to see how we can expand this to help reach as many patients who may benefit as possible. So broadly, we now have the tools to accelerate discovery, to find places throughout the genome that might be the targets for genome modification. We can use the full power of synthetic biology to rewrite those sequences. And that gives us incredible power to start imagining how we can precisely engineer the functions that we want T cells to have or other cells in the immune system to transform them into more and more powerful therapies that are safe, effective, and hopefully increasingly affordable and accessible for the patients who really need them. And that has been the basis for launching something that can, is bigger than any individual lab. This really requires broad partnership and that is the spirit of the new Gladstone UCSF Institute of Genomic Immunology, which is an unprecedented partnership between Gladstone and UCSF to weave together uh, expertise here in immunology in computational biology, synthetic biology, genomics, gene engineering, all the way to cell therapy. And the opportunities afforded by the Living Therapeutics Initiative and the new cell expanded cell therapy manufacturing opportunities really complete this puzzle of how we can create an institute that has the opportunities to go from fundamental discovery all the way to innovative cell therapies. And we're not only working alone, but with another a number of other groups and institutes around the Bay Area to really create an ecosystem that is that fosters innovation, collaboration, and new translational opportunities for improved immunotherapies. I'll just give you a little snapshot of some of the people who are involved in this effort to, at the Gladstone UCSF Institute of Genomic Immunology. We're just finishing our first round of faculty recruitment and look forward to bringing in new members and expanding the, the expertise here and really the, the, the collaborative community that we're building with excitement about the possibilities to help patients in partnership with the Living Therapeutics Initiative. I wanna thank the people who are doing this work in my lab and in this, in, in this institute and in our broader network of collaborators. And thanks again to the really remarkable leadership of Sam Hawgood, Alan Ashworth, Barry Selleck, and so many others who are pushing forward to really expand the, what we can achieve with cell therapies here at UCSF. Uh, well, thanks to the speakers for all those really exciting presentations. They give you, this is just a small snapshot of the work that's already going on at, at UCSF that we want to, to build on. Um, we now I, we have a funding opportunity uh, that we're very pleased to announce due to the generosity of uh, multiple donors. Um, this funding, I want to emphasize that we are not the NIH. We do not want your boring R01. Sorry, I don't want to be pejorative about R01s, but we know that one has to be a little conservative if you're going to get those type of grants funded. We want innovation. 
we want um, uh, excite, uh, exciting proposals. We want people entering this field who have not been in it before. So we're going to take a, a, a quite a different view on the, the applications, um, emphasizing that, that innovation. This will be the first of multiple funding rounds. Uh, we're gonna fund both discovery uh, biology, uh, but the aim of that discovery biology should be to build a product that we can manufacture in the facility. Uh, it doesn't have to be immediately, but it should be moving toward it towards that direction. We'll also uh, provide funding to move um, existing products already designed to the clinic. So we'll consider funding at least uh, in part uh, DNA manufacture, virus manufacture, and of course, um, cellular manufacture when the facility is, uh, is open, which uh, should be uh, uh, within a, or just after a year from now. So uh, I just want to close by uh, thanking the chancellor, all the speakers, and then all 150 of you who've attended this, um, uh, this uh, uh, presentation. And you can contact us. Um, we have a live website, you know, livingcelltherapy.ucsf.edu. And you can email us at this email address. Um, if you have any questions about the funding opportunity or anything about the Living Therapeutics Initiative. So thanks very much for attending. Have a great day.